Let's quickly go to the Word of God in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. <clears throat> and then in the New Testament, we'll look at the Gospel of John, verses 10 and 10. Here now in the Old Testament, Proverbs chapter 14 <clears throat> and verse 12, a familiar passage of Scripture that I'm sure you've heard several times before. Proverbs 14 and 12, hear now the word of God. <clears throat> there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. And then the Gospel of John, chapter 10 and verse 10, hear now this passage. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, and verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. You may be seated. I want to talk to our youth today about making the right choices making the right choices. Life really is about decision making. And we have to make decisions all of our lives. How do I make the right choice? You might be wondering. In your youth, you are under constant pressure to make the right choices. I want to get every attention of every young person that here today. You are constantly under the gun to make the right choices in life. The problem is, is that in our youth, we have limited decision-making skills. We just don't have enough experience when it comes to making decisions. So we depend on folk like mom or dad, or grandma, or aunt and uncle. Because if used wisely, they can help us make some good decisions. But oftentimes, the devil himself will have us to believe that we need no one. And so I ask you today, who do we listen to? What are the voices that are constantly grabbing for your attention? Are you following the right examples? Who are the examples that you're following and what are they saying? What are the choices that our examples and our role models are telling us? The question for every young person this morning is, Pastor, how do I stay focused in a blurred vision culture. What happens when we make bad choices and we follow shallow advice? First, I want you to use your youth as an advantage. Allow yourself to grow into making some of the best path. The Bible says that there is a path that looks right but it's not right. The Bible says that culture can present a path to life that, that looks enticing, that looks like the right thing, but it leads to death. So take careful inventory of who you allow to speak to your soul on a daily basis. Are you with me? Now, now my young brothers and sisters, y'all don't have to help me out right now. Help me out. A couple of weeks ago, I, I went down in the basement of my house, uh -huh. and I wanted to familiarize myself again. And I said, let me listen to the young rappers of our day. <laughs> Put my headphones on. Listen, listen, listen. I, I listened to Fergie. L.A. Love. Lala. I listened to Rich Homie Kwan. He sung about Walk Through. I listened to Two Chains. 
and he sung about 24 hours. And I wondered about two chains. I said, did his mama at the hospital look down and say, what shall we call him? I know, two chains. <laughs> I just wondered if that's what his mama came up with. I listened to Eminem survival. Listen to Kanye West sing about I Won. I listen to Tiger and Young Thug sing about hookah. I listen to Drake sing about the language. I listen to Childish Gambino singing 3005. I listened to Migos sing about fight night. I pulled up schoolboy Q, the man of the year. I listened to Ray Schremer, no flex up. I listened to Big Sean and E-40. And I can't tell you what they sang about when we in church. can tell you the name of their song. But some of y'all know it, y'all know it. <laughs> Listen to YG and Drake, Who Do You Love? Listen to Young Money. I said, I'm glad he Young Money, I ain't got no old money, he Young Money. <laughs> I listen to Wiz Khalifa, We Dim Boys. <laughs> I listen to Nicki Minaj. She wasn't talking about no snake. <laughs> Y'all feel me? I listened to, to Lil Wayne. Believe me, that's what he sang about. I listened to T.I. and Iggy Azalea. No mediocre. I listened to Rich Gang. Although they look like a pole gang to me. They sang about lifestyle. I listened to YG and Jeezy. I can't tell you about what they sang in church. I can't tell you. I listened to Bobby Smurfs. I can't tell you about what he sang. I didn't go in church. I listened to Kid Eat and Chris Brown. Show me. Listen to Little Rihanna, the monster. Listen to Carly XCX. Iggy Azalea singing about fancy. Listen, listen, listen. Why I preach it while you're listening? Because I wanted to know one question. My young brothers and sisters, are these the voices that occupy your mind? Are these the voices that you go to bed listening to because you got your iPod on and you wake up in the morning listening to? Are these the voices? Because they all had a common theme. Their theme was sex, liquor, drugs, violence, the N-word, the B-word, the F-word, all kind of other words. They portray a life that is fun, full of money. Folks oh, throwing out hundreds. I wish I could get them to church and throw out some hundreds. They just throwing out money. They just throwing out. They're at the party, just throwing out hundreds. Okay, they just come to church. Just one first Sunday, come to church. Throw out some money. Talk about lust and violence. Yeah. The hood is glorified, but none of them live there. Ignorance is praised. The videos make this path appear fun, and it seems like it's something we all want to jump on. But the Bible says there's a path that seems right. There's a path that the videos can glamorize, and it seems right and good. Until all of a sudden, you've got to go to the funeral of a 
17 year old that was shot down. And all of a sudden, when there is a 16 year old girl that winds up pregnant, all of a sudden, when you glamorize ignorance so much so until you can't even get out of high school. All of a sudden, when we walk around and we want to look like two chain, three chain, tie chain, whatever it is, we want to look like that. We want to act like that. Nobody will give us a job. There's a path that seems right. to death. Yes. Now don't get me wrong, my young brothers and sisters, I'm not trying to tell you what to listen to, not to listen to. I'm telling you to understand that it's for entertainment purposes only. Yes, sir. It is not for you to model your life, it is not for you to emulate the fashion, it is not for you to assume <laughs> that a mouthful of gold the visibility of my Hanes underwear <laughs> is going to get me to the Oval Office. God has a path for your life. Every young person here today, I want you to understand that God has a path for your life. God has a goal for your life. He didn't just start thinking about you yesterday. But you are made in God's image. You are made by a wonderful creator. And God has not just decided to bless you yesterday. That your blessing has been designed for you. Because some of you have great skills. Great potential. Yes. Great love. Yes. And your goal in life is to be to do something more than just drop it like a hot. That's, right. That's, right. That's not a goal. Your goal in life is, is not just to emulate someone who is merely making profit off of you. Your goal is to make something of yourself. Yes. To honor the rich legacy of, of a generation people who didn't have the opportunities that you had. Our job here at Progressive Baptist Church, as I've tasked Pastor Reverend Page as our youth minister, mm -hmm. is that I want us to design a program that helps our young people to grow spiritually. Yes. Well, I want us to be able to, to, to understand that there, not only, maybe there's time in your brain for Little Wayne. Maybe there's time in your brain for the rich gang, Nicki Minaj, who are Lil' Kim, who are. But there must also be space in your brain for God. There must also be space in your heart for God. I want you to know that when the going gets rough, you cannot call up the rapper. When trials and tribulation come to your door, you must have a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Prepare yourself to serve God. Jesus said, the thief comes yes. to steal your life, yes. mm -hmm. to kill your life, yes. to destroy your life, yes. to have you wake up one day and look back over the years and say, where has it all gone? Yes. Have you fall in bouts of discouragement and depression and despair? That's what the enemy does. And he'll have you walking down all kinds of paths that will lead to destruction. Listen, listen, listen. I don't know who the Lord has been preaching to today, but God has a claim on every young 
person's yes. wife here. Yes. Yes. You were not born by accident. God keeps his eye on you. God loves you. God forgives you. But I ask you, who do you spend your time listening to? Who do you allow to seep into the subconsciousness of your heart? If you go to bed, sing an anaconda. If you go to bed, singing fancy. Wake up singing fancy. If your minister of spiritual growth is two chains, is your pastor Lil Wayne, I can guarantee you that when the money run out, and you're no longer able to buy the CD or show up at the concert, that it's done. And at some point, Life shows up. At some point, life 101. You know, when I was growing up, I used to feel like I had all the answers. And my mama decided that since you have all the answers, I'm going to give you all the problems. And we're going to see if, 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 if your answers meet the problem. And I quickly figured out that I couldn't party all night and still pay the car note on the first. I thought I could. I thought I could just have a real party. Now, y'all don't know none of these folks, but I'm just going to throw some names out at you. You don't, you don't know none of these folks, but I thought I could listen to the Ohio players. Uh, you know, Boots it. Yeah, y'all don't know those folks. You know. I thought I could just throw on a little Lionel Richie. You know, we ain't talking two chains now. We're working on that. And, and so, in life, it's just going to be cool. All of a sudden, the reality of life. All of a sudden, I woke up one day and it dawned upon me that I needed God in my life. All of a sudden, I, I woke up one day and my mother was diagnosed with cancer and didn't know how I was going to get through college. And for the first time, I had to say, Father, I stretch my hand to you. No other help I know. Yes. If you withdraw your hand from me, God, where shall I go? Yes. Yes. All of a sudden, mm. words of my grandmother and aunts and uncles became so true. And I used to hear them say, Jesus is a rock yes. Yes. in a weary land. Yes. And a shelter yes. in the time of sleep. to show up. At some point, it will no longer be about the entertainment. It will no longer be about the grill. It will no longer be about the rap. It will no longer be about the party. But it will be to a point where you say, Father, come see about me. Jesus said, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. That you might experience Spiritual growth, more about it. One of my good friends when first joined the Navy, the chaplain, the admin officer walked into my office and he said, Chaplain, I've got a, one of my young sailors I want you to talk to. And he brought this young kid from Los Angeles, California. Kid was 19 years old. No idea of God and faith or any of that kind of stuff. I'm wondering why, what, how, is our, how our paths crossing right now. He sat on my couch and began to cry. And I said, "What's going on?" And he said, "Chaplain, last night, five of my family members were killed." a drive-by shooting on the east part of Los Angeles. They shot through the picture window of my family. They killed my mother. They killed my father. 
They killed my sister. They killed my grandmother who was living with us. And they killed my cousin. And he said, if I hadn't been in the military, I'm sure I would have been killed as well. And he said, I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm overwhelmed. And now I've got to go home and literally plan funeral services for five folks. For the first time in his life, he said to me, Chaplain, would you pray with me? He said, I don't know nothing much about God. I don't understand why all this happened, but he said, I do know that I feel a need in my life to get right with God. And so we prayed in my office. This young sailor, no relationship with God. Notice, he didn't call T.I. He didn't call Lily. He didn't call Nicki Minaj. Right. <clears throat> didn't understand how two chains could help. Well. But somebody told him yeah. Come on. that Jesus yeah. Yeah. is a rock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somebody at some point in his life helped him to understand that Jesus is a shelter yeah. in the time of storm. Yeah. Somebody help them to understand that, that when life is at its worst, that God can step in and, and he'll walk with you and talk with you and let you know that he was on. And so my challenge to you today, the youth of our church, is to cultivate that relationship with Jesus. Understand that the society will give you a path that will lead you straight to destruction. The society will give you a course, a path, that right now you can go home and watch the video and you say, woo, that looks fun. Let me throw out some hundreds. First of all, you gotta get some hundreds to throw out. That's the first part. Life will just, it's a great part and we're gonna just do the N word and the B word and every other word all night long. It's a great show. That's because it's making them money. Yeah. Yeah. But the world that we all live in, I wish somebody would pay me. I could sing and act crazy. I wish I could get paid. <laughs> Somebody gave me a contract. And what's wrong with you? And the likelihood of you, even if that becomes your lot, Jesus must be at the center of your life. Don't go to bed every night with only the voice of the culture in your ear. Some nights, let the Lord speak yes, to you. Yes. Don't wake up every morning with the voice of the culture bidding you good morning. Well. Let the Lord wake you up this morning. Yes. And you'll know that when you start to cultivate that relationship, you'll sound pretty crazy to some. Yes. But our foreparents used to say, Lord, thank you. Yes. Well, this morning is early rising. Yes. That I've seen another day. Yes. Cultivate the relationship. Yes. Because at the end of the day, as your pastor, as Paige being my arm extension to youth ministry, I am serious yes, about your spiritual health. Yes. I've lived long enough yes, to know that there's going to come a day in well, your life. Well, you will have to call on the name of Jesus. Yeah. I, I've been long enough. I've been a chaplain in the military for 25 years before retiring, but, I, but I've been, been long enough uh -huh. to be in combat in our life. And when the bullets get flying, there really are no atheists. There's going to come a day in your life that 
Mama and Daddy will cross on over to Georgia. Yes, yes. And life becomes real. Yes. And you're going to have to call on his name. Yes, sir. A name above every name. Yes. The name of Jesus. Yes. And I challenge you now. I challenge you during this period of, of growth, of being a part of the youth department here at Progressive, mm -hmm. to start yes, yes. to cultivate. That relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus. Yes. We want to take you to places. We, we want you to have some fun. But more important than that, we want you to have a relationship. Yes. Yes. When you go off to college one day, and everybody around you is doing some crazy stuff. Yeah. I'm still repenting for some of the crazy stuff I do. <laughs> There'll be something within you yeah. that holds the rain. You'll have a joy that the world cannot give you. And the world will not be able to take it away. And so I challenge you, my young brothers and sisters, I challenge you today. Live a life that matters. Live a life that makes a difference. Live a life that you can say, God, thank you. Because even now, God is investing in you. Even now, God is investing in you. You might say, but pastor, I come from the hood. So what? God is investing in you. God wants you to be something. There's a path that seems slight. Seems fun. Seems glamorous. But in the end, it leads to destruction. Jesus said, I've got another path for you. That if you will follow me, if you will take this yoke upon me, just come on and follow me. I will walk with you and I will give you life yes. that the world cannot give. Yes. <clears throat> so, as we think on this youth Sunday, uh -huh. the fun, the party, the gang, the, the glamour, that's all cool. I wish maybe, I wish though maybe, that you not give all of your time to two shame. Yes. I wish that you not give all of your time to Lil Wayne, T.I., Young Thug, Old Thug. <laughs> I wish that you not give all of your mind and your spirit, but while you have the chance and while you have the opportunity, give your life to Jesus. One of these old days, Jesus will stop by. One of these old days, you'll have to call on the name of Jesus. I've got to go to my seat, but somebody here.
you're here today wants you to make the right choice.
I will accept him into the body of Christ. You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All right. Anything y'all want to say? She said it feels good. Yeah. <laughs> and, both of our sisters are coming to us as candidates for baptism. Yeah.